RuneScape Mobile. We all know it's phenomenal for AFK skilling, and even for low and mid tier PVMing, it can perform quite well. But it's garnered extremely questionable reviews on the high end, top tier PVM side of things. And that makes a lot of sense. RuneScape Mobile was never designed for high tier PVMing. That was never the point of it, and I don't think that will ever be the point of it. But today, I want to answer the simple question. Can you do high tier PVMing on RuneScape Mobile? And if so, how different is it of an experience as compared to the native PC client, the RuneScape that we're all a little more used to? In order to answer that question, we are going to be paying almost every single top tier boss in the game a visit with mobile exclusively. This includes group bosses, solo bosses, the whole shebang. After each boss, we're going to go over to the tier list and I'm going to rate each boss individually on how the experience was on mobile as compared to what the experience is like not on mobile, at a regular computer. Before we kick things off in this video, I want to thank RuneScape Mobile for sponsoring this video. It's a video I would not have had time or resources to make on my own, and they've helped me out a bunch in sponsoring. They've given me complete creative freedom to make whatever I want and also say whatever I want as well about the experience. So when I try to do a Virago on mobile a little later on, and you see what appears to be my soul leaving my body, I will be very candid about that experience. If you have any interest at all in playing RuneScape on a mobile device, you can follow the link at the top of the description to pre-register now and you can earn rewards for yourself and the community as well. Now, with that aside, we've got a bunch of bosses to try out and not a lot of time to do it, so let's get right into it. I want to start things off with a bang and try out what is probably the most difficult duo boss in the game, but I feel like it would kind of be cheating to bring someone along with me that wasn't on a mobile device and then have me on a mobile device you wouldn't really know that I was pulling my own weight. And because of that, I need to find someone who is willing to duo with me also on mobile. And I think I know just the person for the job. I need to, I need to make sure this ability bar works because if it doesn't and all my plans are ruined. We no, no, your bar's coded. Your bar's coded. Hundred percent, your bar's coded. No, no, Lock I, it in. I'm not using revolution right now. You're on full manual on mobile. <laughs> yes. This guy's a monster. <laughs> I think for 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 high level PVMing, I think there are going to be some bosses that work out very well, and I think there are going to be other bosses that do not work out well at all. And I think I think Rago is going to be one of those bosses that may not work out exceptionally well. Um, but, alas, I think we should get into it. We should find out. Let's do it. Oh, this is so weird. Man, you got it. You got it, Lika. I think you're doing great, great, man. I think you're doing great, buddy. Thank you. No, I'm really proud of you. You've come a long way. Yeah, yeah you could take your time here, Luca. Just keep eating food, please. That's uh, quite, quite important. I, 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 I died. Oh! Um. <laughs> Goodbye. Can I say, I feel like the full manual thing was Might potentially, I don't want to say it was errant, but I do want to say, um, I think I had good survivability and I didn't run into any issues there. And I feel like you may have run into some more issues than I did in that instance. Yeah, 100%. Um, so I 100%. think you might want to bust out what I would like to call the Rebo bar of the PVMer. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm sending this up. I'm spited. I'm spited. Oh, God. I'm dead. No! I, got okay, I wasn't paying attention. I was looking at the prayer. I was looking at the prayer. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Uh, we should probably off here, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Off, 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 off. Oh my god, I put a rebo bar! Go, go, Luca. Run, run, go, buddy. Go, go, my boy. Go, Get over go, there. Go, go, go. Prayer go, swap, go. prayer swap. Flicks like Ricardo, dude. Ricardo yeah. wouldn't have flicked like that. All right. I just power bursted. Oh no, and I needed that for next phase, didn't I? Kind of. A little bit. Uh, yeah, power first for this part. Let's go. No, it was a misclick. You're taking like no damage here. It was a misclick. Yeah, good. I'm 100%. Okay. It. How do we do this next phase? We didn't really talk about it. We didn't really talk about it. Uh, I'll tank all the reds here. Okay, what am I tanking? Uh, just DPS. Just DPS? Yeah, just DPS. Like, like with Eldritch Eldr sniper rifle or like? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, you got, you got the DPS of the gods, right? The Elder gods, yeah, yeah. But it's off right at zero, right? Yeah. Three, or off right now. Two, off. Okay. Oh, Jesus! My Rebo Bar! Rebo Bar, stop! Please! I need you to stop! Help! Okay, it's fine. Oh, God. We're good now. Are we safe? Are we safe? Are we safe? 
All right, we're safe now. I mean, I got most never of my like, food never. left. Like, in a yeah, way, I have here. most of my food left. But in a way, this took years off my life, you know? Do you want to try that. and set you for the blues? Do you want me to try and set you for them? Sure, go Just for eat it. up, just right, in case. Me. Yeah. Yep. Here we go. I oh, can't no. set! Oh. oh, God! Wait, it didn't oh. let me step. It, it literally didn't let me step. I have Kate, actually. I can Kate here. Did I? Yeah, just Kate. On tick. Hard to be on tick with a Rebo bar. Oh, it worked! Oh, we're God gaming. All right, let's go. Big. That's three, I think. Four. Yeah. Five. Is that off? Off right now. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm out of prayer. One second. Bless that prayer. Just getting Kate again here. How many more attacks do you have? I think that's more. Maybe a wallet. It what? is! We did it! Oh, Let's go! Oh. Mago with two God Gamer mobile users. Let's go. <laughs> oh, that was so painful. Okay, oh so, my God. so I think I think honest, honest review time. I'll, uh, I'll take the lead here, and then Luca, you can follow. I would say this. I probably would not choose to voluntarily do a Rago on mobile. I think it's it's somewhere between a C and a D. The C argument is that it technically, like, it did work. It was completable. And in bigger team size with less to do, I think it would work out fine. The D is because it, as a duo, you definitely don't want to experience that. I don't think. I, I just think you're, you're kind of battling the interface in a way you probably wouldn't want to. Um, Absolutely. So, Luca, you, do you feel okay about C or D? I feel I am far more into D. Personally. You're far more on the D side. All right. D it is for Virago. D for duo makes sense. But speaking of duo, we've got another boss to go to, which is Solak. We're, we're going to do a, We're going to do a Solak on. All right. That's going to be good. On RuneScape Mobile. I made a preset for this, by the way. So I have one like locked and loaded. Good to go. Okay. okay I'm going to click quick go. start. Ready? Oh god, relentless, we're big chilling. Holy crap. I'm trying to Why does bomb. that not work? I don't think my phone bomb worked, to be honest. Okay, I'm gonna not move, is that okay? Yeah, sure. Oh. Um... Oh god! Okay, Sorry, so I, I think the attempt was good. I think everything we needed was there. All the pieces were in place. I just think we possibly I just don't think we I don't think we believed in each other enough. Get the close one, I'll go far. I would say this. Bladed Dive. Oh, we'll go to the opposite side for you. Bladed Dive is surprise. It's sneakily responsive. Oh my god, my game lag! Let's oh go, Luca! Let's what? go, dude! Let's go! No. We're pogging! No. We are straight what? pogging, dude! Let's go! Alright, alright, alright. What? All right. Okay, zero, uh, one cycle, uh, has been officially devalued. Yeah. Luca, we could have been on a bus right now. Like a literal Dude. bus. I'm actually in shock. Are you going for a res? You did not just do a tick res on mobile. You're capping. Get out of here, Luca. You're making me look so bad. Don't worry about it, bro.
Um, oh, we're actually gonna get this, so we're not gonna have to. Yeah, yeah, we are. Wait, we skipped. Oh. Wait, we're pogging. Okay, uh, come cleanse, come cleanse. Yeah, yeah, come cleanse. Yeah, let's cleanse. Let's actually cleanse, please. Luca, we're pogging, dude. Dude, what this is, is this? sick. This could be record of the world. I think it might already be. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. We're big chillin'. We're big chillin'. We're big chillin', Luca. So Don't quiet. even worry. So I have never lost a life point in my life. I think we're fine. Dude! Let's we go! We did it! 1046, sub 11, Solak duo, oh. with oh both players on RuneScape Mobile. One cycle, let's go. <laughs> One cycle core. Second, that was pretty uh, fun. Second rain skip. Is it loot time? Right, I think I'm gonna loot, loot in here, I'm gonna loot in here. Can I? Loot, it's at loot, Marathon. loot, loot. Loot at Claim. I got Irits, and you got Crush Nets. Okay, that feels kind of not worth the amount of effort we put in. Oh, oh. But that was fun. It's time to go over to the tier list. I I know how I feel about this. I I absolutely know how I feel about this. I know exactly where I stand with this. Um, to me, to me, Solak is a straight up C. It because it was less unpleasant than Rago. Like trying to bomb tank it. Out. I think in, in intercepts not working. It wasn't great. It wasn't the experience of a lifetime. Like I was basing. It wasn't beautiful. But it worked, and it absolutely worked. And to me, that's why I get to see. But well, how do you feel the about fact that? We managed, the, van, the fact we managed to get a one cycle, let, 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 let's just put it that way. Yeah, that makes it a C. You'd agree, that's, right? That's 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 the one sentence review you need. You see, can get a one cycle. C for cool achievement. Take care, man. Thank you so much for joining. This was a lot of fun. Absolutely. Take care, man. Bye. Well, that was awful nice of Luca to join for. Okay, it's tier list time. We've been through Virago and we've been through Solak, but there are another 18 bosses on the chopping block that we're going to go through on mobile, and I'm about to throw them all on the tier list right now. The first boss we're going to take a look at is Vindicta. Vindy's one of the easier bosses on the tier list, but it's an important boss. It's a boss a lot of people enjoy, and my favorite way to do Vindy is to set up for a speed kill. So I pop a Berserker Aura, and I use a Dragon Battle Axe spec at Wars Crystal before I head into the boss fight. I was able to get myself a 26 second kill, which is honestly really solid, and my average kill time over 10 or 15 kills was right around the 30 second mark. This is pretty much identical to the normal way I would do Vindicta, and I would absolutely do this with regularity. If I was ever on a bus ride or wasn't able to be at a PC, I would 100% do Vindy on mobile, and it worked exceptionally well. And for that reason, Vindy is going all the way up to the S tier. This was almost identical to the regular PC experience, and I really enjoyed it. The next boss I went to was Araxor, and this one absolutely shocked me. I did eight or nine kills, and even as the Enrage went up, I ran into no issues at all. I didn't die, and I didn't sign either. Araxor works really well because the phases are relatively short, and I found I didn't need a ton of keybinds. The main limitation on mobile is how much hotbar space you actually have. You've got 14 keybinds effectively, and that's it. But at Araxor, it wasn't a problem at all. I had no issues working with the space that I had, and I was even able to get a 2 minute 33 second Araxi kill, which is exceptionally competitive, and we were absolutely cruising. Araxor is a boss I would absolutely do on mobile, and going into it, I didn't think it was going to perform well at all. It absolutely surprised me, and Araxor is going, fittingly, into the A tier. Next up, we've got Raksha. 
I'm just gonna preface this by saying, four-way prayer flicking on mobile is not fun at all. I probably missed 50% of my prayer flicks, and it was not a pleasant experience. One of the major limitations on mobile is if you're using your hot bars, so those 14 spots with your right and your left hand, you can only use one input on that hot bar at a time. This meant that if I wanted to use an ability and prayer switch at the same time, you cannot do that. And I really hope this is something I look into and change because as it stands right now, that is the greatest limitation for PBMing on mobile and at Raksha, it really shows. You have a lot of trouble doing things like moving and prayer flicking at the same time. And because of this, a lot of your prayer inputs just don't work. Outside of the prayer flicking, I was able to hit most of the DPS checks and that aspect of the fight wasn't terrible. I had my Onyx bolts keeping me alive. So food was not an issue either, but there was one other part of the boss fight that was very uncomfortable. And that was at 400,000 life points when you're supposed to blade a dive around the room and destroy the shadow pools. I found this very difficult to aim just because I'm looking at an absolutely tiny screen. And if you miss a single blade of dive, you basically have to teleport out and restart the kill. But enough of the negatives of this boss. Phase four actually went quite well and I didn't have any issues stepping back or blocking any of the tail swipes. And I didn't get hit by it a single time. My final kill time was right around five minutes and I didn't go through a ton of food, but this was not a pleasant experience. There's so much room for error when so many of your limited action bar slots are taken up by things that you absolutely need to complete the fight. These are things like four separate prayers, the blade of dive ability, the freedom ability, and it just wasn't something that I would recommend doing. And for that reason, Raksha is taking its spot right next to Virago in the D tier. At the Queen Black Dragon, we've got some pros and cons. First and foremost, I didn't lose my hardcore this time around. <laughs> Queen Black Dragon is one of the easier bosses on the tier list and you could absolutely do it on mobile and it wouldn't be terribly different. My average kill time was right around a minute to a minute and five seconds and that's serviceable. If I had a Reaper or a Slayer task, I'd be completely willing to do it, although I was annoyed a couple times at the responsiveness of clicking on the artifacts between each phase and for that reason, it's not going to be an A tier, it is going to be the lone member of the B tier. It's time to head into the Elite Dungeon. I'm going to go through EDs 1, 2, and 3 in order, and we're going to go through each boss as well as the overall dungeon experience on mobile. Starting things off with ED1 and the Sanctum Garden. Prayer flicking at this boss is fine because it attacks very slowly, but it is a boss that requires a good amount of moving around at times, and you can't really stay put. As a result of this, there were some times that I was pulled out of combat and I wasn't able to get off great rotations, and as a result of that, the kill time was not spectacular, but it was serviceable. I'm going to be putting the Sanctum Guardian in the C tier next to Solak. Next up, we've got the dreaded Masuda. Masuda is a boss fight with an absolute ton of movement needed. You've got the spin attack that requires you to move away from it, and you've also got the thrashing waters that have to be killed in melee distance if you want damage reduction on the final phase of the fight. Because of all this movement, I found it difficult to continually attack the boss, and I also found it quite hard to keep up with the spawns of the waters. As a result of this, it wasn't a very pleasant experience. And although I was able to kill the boss without too much trouble and I didn't use a ton of food, it wasn't an experience I would recommend. I felt like I was battling the interface more than anything else a lot of the time, just because you've got a very small screen, you're looking for the waters, you're changing angles, and it was just a whole lot to manage on mobile. For me, Masuda belongs in the D tier. Finally, the final boss of ED1, Serio. The boss attacks very slowly, which means soul split flicking and maintaining high HP was very easy to do. There's a bit of moving around in this boss fight, but you don't really have to rotate your camera too much, so it went fine. Heading up top to the crystals, it's a very small space and the click box on the crystals is absolutely massive. So I found it a little bit difficult to navigate my character and walk into melee distance to drop my dominion mines. But outside of that, it was all right. My kill time was just around five minutes. And despite making a number of mistakes in my rotation, I was able to get a two cycle with range. For me personally, I'm gonna be putting Seryu in the C tier. Elite Dungeon 1 on the whole gets a mix of C's and D's. It's not something I would necessarily subject myself to, but if you had to for the Odd Reaper, it would go just fine. Heading into ED2, we're going to start things off with Astalan. I was able to do my normal rotation that I would do if I was on a computer, and I got a kill time of 46 seconds, which is certainly passable. The boss itself has some very random and I would say annoying mechanics, but being on mobile didn't make them any more annoying or more random. It was basically the same experience, except I was on my phone. 
It's not a boss that requires a ton of moving around, and if the Neuron Star spawns directly on top of your head and kills you on mobile, it probably would have killed you as well on a PC. For me personally, Astalarn, although I think is an F tier boss, the mobile experience is a B tier. It's not noticeably different than what it would be like on a PC. Next up, we've got Veracle. I was able to get a sub two minute kill. My recorder broke midway through, but as you can tell, I used almost no food and I found it to be the easiest and best elite dungeon boss on mobile so far. Prayer flicking was really easy because the boss attacks slowly and there's not a lot of movement required either. So you can just flatline, straight line DPS and the boss goes down like nothing. Because of this, I'm putting Veracleth right into the A tier. Now we're onto the final boss of ED2, the Blackstone Dragon. This boss fight does not require a ton of movement. Especially if you're ranging, there's a safe spot for the black hands. That means you can clear them by standing in two separate locations to get all four down. If you were to use melee here, it would be a different story, but I found this to be an extremely pleasant boss fight. It went really well, it was very easy, and I was able to get myself a final kill time of 3 minutes and 57 seconds. The final boss of 82, the Blackstone Dragon, is going straight into the A tier. Not only would I hypothetically do ED2 on mobile, I probably will end up doing ED2 on mobile on my Iron Man as I am yet to get any of the three codices and this seems like a really good way to get them done. Next up, it's time to go underwater. The first boss in ED3 is the Krassian Leviathan. This is a boss that doesn't do a whole lot. It does require some movement, but the base auto attacks deal almost no damage and you can leave Soul Split up the entire time, which immediately saves a bunch of keybind slots and allowed me to do a pretty decent DPS rotation. I was able to one cycle the boss, but I will say there is some RNG involved in one cycling the Krassian specifically as the time that it phases into the second half of the room is completely random. Normally it happens around a minute and five to a minute and 10 seconds. And this time around, it was closer to a minute 18 when I finished the fight. So it was a lucky one cycle that probably should have been a two cycle, but the overall experience was just fine. This boss just really doesn't do a whole lot of anything. So on mobile, it was easy. I'm gonna put it right in the B tier. Unlike the Krassian, we've got a boss that does quite a bit coming up next. It's Terrakin. It's one of the few bosses where combo eating is very useful as you're actually taking a lot of damage. Combo eating is where you eat a solid food and sip a brew in the same game tank. Once again, I ran into some issues as if you try to combo eat off the action bar, it just won't work because you're trying to press two inputs in one game tank. Halfway through the boss fight, I gave up and started eating through my invent and that made it quite a bit easier. The kill time wasn't too bad, and I'd be willing to subject myself to it again in the future, but it wasn't terribly pleasant, and I'm going to throw it in the C tier. Terra gets a boss with a lot going on. There's a lot of movement as well, especially if you want to go after the bloats, and for me personally, doing that on my tiny phone screen wasn't the best thing in the world, but in a pinch, it worked. Now it's time to talk about the Ambassador. The Ambassador is by far the most complicated of all the Elite Dungeon bosses, and because of this, I don't have the highest hopes. I was able to deal pretty good damage to the boss, but the ambassador requires a lot of moving around and prayer flicking, which I found to be quite click intensive at times. For the first spinner phase, I chose not to use my Eldritch Crossbow special as it's pretty much a cheat code, but even without it, it was fairly clean to finish off all six of the spinners. An interesting thing on mobile is if you tap the boss's HP bar on the left hand side of the screen, that acts as target cycle, and it will automatically lock you on to the closest available target. Because of this, I was able to attack and pretty much finish off the first spinner before it had even spawned. On the last phase, I had a bit of trouble blocking the white smoke that heals the boss, but the red special attack was dealt with very well. For the first one I got, I used Devotion. And for the second and final one, I set up my Revo bar to have Resonance and Reflect as the first two abilities. This works out well because if you don't have a shield on, it's going to automatically skip those abilities and just go through the damaging basics, but as soon as my screen turned red, I could equip my shield and it would automatically rezo and reflect, dealing with the special attack completely automatically. Overall, I would put the ambassador at a C. The boss has a million life points and there's a lot of movement involved, but hey, whatever floats your boat. Overall, I think ED3 falls into a similar category as ED1. It wasn't perfect, but it was very completable. And in a pinch, I would subject myself to it again, although I personally probably won't. Now that we're done the elite dungeons, it's time to head to Nex. Nex is a boss that I wasn't expecting to go well, but it actually went very smoothly. The phases are so short that you don't need an ultimate ability rotation, and I had no issues with blood phase either, even with a revo bar that had some bleeds on it. I manually threw in a couple thresholds, and if I'd needed, I could have used the dark bow special attack to phase it in the event of an accidental bleed, but I didn't even have to. My kill time was right around 2 minutes and 50 seconds, which to me is very passable, and that's something I would absolutely do again in a pinch. 
Nex is not a boss I terribly enjoy, but Nex on mobile worked extremely well, and it's honestly something that I will consider doing in the future. For that reason, I am pleasantly surprised, but I'm going to be putting Nex in the A tier. Next up, we've got Beastmaster and Yakamaru. Now, unlike Solak and Rago, I wasn't able to get a full 10-person team all on mobile. But instead, to make it fair, I thought I would just take the hardest roles at each boss. So, I'm going to be basing BM and Yaka on my phone. And we're going to see how it goes. Basing Beastmaster is pretty simple rotationally. You've got a couple defensives that you have to use at the right time, and so long as you do that, it's pretty safe. So Beastmaster, I wasn't expecting to have any issues at, and I didn't. It went very smoothly, the kill time was good, and I was able to complete my roll without too many hiccups. Basing Yakamaru is a little bit more complicated, and I wanted to really put it to the test. There's a way to base Yaka where you're just spam eating food the entire time, and it doesn't really require you to use a ton of abilities. I thought that would be cheating. So I wanted to base Yakamaru with two conditions. One. I wanted to be on a Ripper Demon and not a Beast of Burden, and two, I didn't want to use Acto to reset my defensive abilities. There were some mistakes made in the kill and we actually had to redo a full pool. So the boss fight lasted longer than it normally would have, but still, basing Yakko went a lot better than I thought it would, and I didn't run into any major issues at any point. I wasn't able to output as much damage as I would have otherwise been able to, and I didn't go through too many ultimate ability rotations, but if you're in need of a base and you're on mobile, it absolutely worked, and it worked quite well. I was able to do my role reliably and help the team, and it was a really good experience. For me personally, I'm going to be putting both Beastmaster and Yakamaru into the A tier. I think that's where they belong, and I would absolutely do that again. One quick reminder though, if you are going to Yakamaru on mobile, don't forget to take your stuns off your Evo bar, because that will wipe the team. Oh, we got a visitor. Okay, we have we have a bit of a visitor. Um, no, buddy. Um, yeah, anyway, on, on to the next boss. <laughs> Oh no, Pippin, buddy. <laughs> Second to last, we're going to be going to the Calfight King. I know a lot of people consider KK to be a melee boss, but my preferred way to solo KK is actually to range camp. I get better kill times that way, and I find it to be significantly easier in terms of getting rotations off and being able to skip the green attack as well. Calfight King went well enough on mobile that I actually stayed for 30 plus kills. My average kill time was right around two minutes, and this was an extremely pleasant experience. I even got myself a drag or a drop to boot. But skipping the green attack was extremely easy and I didn't run into any issues. The only cautionary tale I would tell about the Calfight King is there were times that I had to open up my invent and my invent would block the boss. Calfight King is a boss where it's really important to be able to count the auto attacks. And I was able to do it because I'm experienced at the boss. I've soloed it over a thousand times. But if you weren't familiar with the boss, it'd be easy to lose track of the auto attacks, especially for those moments where you can't actually see the boss, and those moments you could end up getting an unfavorable special attack at a time you didn't want it. Calfight King is going straight into the B tier. That was the absolute only negative, and not only would I do this again in the future on mobile, I probably will. Last but not least, we're taking our talents, or lack thereof, to Telos. Telos is a tough one. It requires far too many abilities and switches to actually be able to rely on those 14 slots. And it means you have to do a lot of your inputs straight out of the ability book. Although I was able to do certain phases correctly, it was so incredibly clunky as compared to doing a kill on a computer. And I couldn't even come close to recommending it. Eva Lucario, who joined us earlier, has completed 4,000% enraged Telos with no food on RuneScape Mobile. And even talking to him, he said it was one of the least pleasant experiences of his entire life. He resoundingly placed Telos in the F tier, and I am going to do the exact same. I would not recommend doing Telos in mobile under any circumstance. It wasn't a pleasant experience, and it is not something I will ever be doing again. But hey, we find ourselves at the end of the tier list. I've gone and tried out most of the tough bosses in the game, so you don't have to. I think the biggest surprise for me was Araxor, but there were a lot of bosses that went a little better than I thought they would, and I would absolutely be open to PVMing on RuneScape Mobile. At the same time, if they made a couple slight changes, it would be significantly easier to get your foot in the door with PVMing on mobile. I think the biggest thing for me would be allowing multiple inputs from the action bars at the same time. Okay, that's everything. Thank you all so much for watching. And if you're at all interested in playing RuneScape on a mobile device, you can click on the link at the top of my description and you can pre-register now to earn rewards both for you and the rest of the community. Outside of that, I hope everyone's well, I hope everyone enjoyed the video, and I will see you guys in a couple days for the next one.